as usual, Kaspersky have released their new versions for 2017 quite early. You know what that means, right? Time for another review. This is Leo, and you are watching the PC Security Channel. This video was sponsored by GraphicStock, the largest unlimited library of photos, images, vectors, and all sorts of visual content. With a membership, you get unlimited access to all the content on the website, which is a designer's paradise. All the stuff is also in high resolution and is royalty free, so it is ideal for online use. By signing up using the link in the description, you can download up to 140 pieces of content for free. So go ahead, show some love to GraphicStock for sponsoring the PC Security Channel. Go to graphicstock.com slash YouTube or click on the link in the description box below to get your exclusive 7-day free trial to GraphicStock. So in this video we will be taking a look at Kaspersky Internet Security 2017. As you can tell from the version number, first impressions. The user interface is very well polished as you would expect at this stage. Kaspersky is one of the veterans in the AV industry. The only downside I noticed is that the animations, although visually quite appealing, do add a bit of time to navigation. So maybe they could make the animations a bit faster and I think that would make the UI feel a bit more responsive. But apart from that, it is very well laid out and it's one of my favorite user interfaces. So not much to complain here. Now talking about improvements, they have improved um, some of their previous components, but now we have webcam protection, software updater, and I believe there is a cleanup tool in here as well. Apart from the usual stuff, they have added a new unit called Kaspersky Secure Connection, which honestly is just a modified version of Hotspot Shield. What I find annoying about this is that you only get 200 megabytes along with your Kaspersky subscription. And then there's this remove limitation button which redirects you to buy more stuff. Now I don't expect this kind of thing in a premium product. So honestly it's more of an annoyance than a feature because 200 megabytes is barely anything to use. So enough talk. Let's just load up our malware links and see if Kaspersky can continue to amaze us with its brilliant detection ratio and zero-day components. So let's start off with install1.exe mod analytics. This is a recent link. Kaspersky blocks it with its web antivirus. So let's move on to the next one. Os.exe or us.exe, whatever it was intended to be. Here is the next link. And it is finally blocked. Our next URL is trying to take advantage of the Olympics trend to sneak in some malware, but Kaspersky doesn't let that happen. Done.exe, more like done4.exe. Not if you're running Kaspersky though, because it is blocked immediately. Let's try out the final links. Once again, immediately blocked. Now henry.exe, I know this is a really old link, but I kind of found it funny that it was still online. So I decided to try it out anyway, and it's no surprise that it's actually blocked. So Kaspersky did quite well in the link test. It truly really isn't a huge surprise. Kaspersky does have really good signatures, and uh, they have really good intelligence when it comes to finding new malicious links. Now we're going to disable the protection and move on to the more difficult part, that is the detection ratio test. So let's see what kind of detection Kaspersky can manage on some recent samples. All right, so here we have 1000 malware files. All of these are fairly recent. I just grabbed them a day ago, so they should be a pretty good indicator as to how this product works when it comes to detection. But before we get started, I would like to change a couple of scan settings since Kaspersky does like to disinfect files. We are going to change the 
action on threat detection to delete instead of disinfect. That way we know that the number of files left in the folder are the number of misses. I'll just show you that this is the same setting for the selective scan, which is what we're going to do. So here we go. Let's see what Kaspersky can manage. A point to note is that the Kaspersky scan is much slower than a lot of the other AV products. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. It is just because Kaspersky goes much more in depth than other products. For example, another AV product might just block an entire archive because of one malware inside it, but Kaspersky is going to scan inside it and try to remove that particular part of the archive that is malicious. So it's more accurate, but that also means that it takes more time to detect and remove stuff. All right, the scan and removal process is complete. It says all objects disinfected, but that's just Kaspersky language. If you look over here, the objects were actually deleted. Now let's get back to our folder and see what we have left. So over here we have eight items, but I'm going to make another clarification because I get this question so often. Not really a question, sometimes it's more of an attack. So people always complain that the number shown over here, that is 997, does not match with the number left in the folder. And that is going to happen regardless of which folder you're scanning with Kaspersky. It's not because I sneak in some malware samples or I try to delete some to get a flawed result. It is just that Kaspersky reports files differently. So the things that it's reporting over here are often um, inside archives and things like that. If you look closely over here, it says malware, malware, um, this.exe, then dash. So it can have multiple detections for one file. As you can see, this DLL file, this executable file, this DLL file, this DLL file, all of these four files are just one file inside the folder, but Kaspersky reports it as four detections. So that is why the numbers don't match. Also, if you are smart enough, you would have already realized this looking at this number of files scanned because it says 1,415 files scanned while well, I only had 1,000 in the folder. This is obvious and uh, it shouldn't have been mentioned, but trust me, I've got a lot of comments on my previous comparison videos where people are just whining left and right that I screwed up the test because the numbers don't match. And instead of doing the research, they just jump the gun and say that I'm trying to rig the tests. But that is not the case, as you can see over here. So, um, that out of the way, let's find out the detection ratio. Eight items left, we had a thousand to start. That translates to a detection ratio of 99.2% which is quite impressive considering these samples, but we have seen more stunning results. So now let's re-enable all of Kaspersky's shields. We are just going to resume protection. And as you can see, everything is turned on, including its zero-day components, application control, firewall, network attack blocker, system watcher, and so on. Everything's enabled apart from anti-banner, which comes disabled, by the way. So now let's execute these files and see if Kaspersky can prevent them from infecting the system. Our first file seems to have executed. Let's open up kill switch so that we can see these process in memory. All right, we do have malware462.exe running. Let's proceed to the next file. Once again, it was allowed to load up by Kaspersky. Keep in mind though, they might be restricted by application control. Seems like Kaspersky has found something. Yep, it is a memory process and it was deleted. So we're going to proceed. There's an error message. Once again, error message. Kaspersky is detecting some more stuff.
we are having this recurring pop-up it's refusing to go away and Kaspersky says uh, it has found something with behavior characteristic of malware so that is a behavioral detection the request is to disinfect and restart the system which I'm going to click on just after running the next three files still trying to disinfect this DLL file just have one more file to go so we'll just run it and then we'll reboot the system Hmm, it seems like this is some kind of illegal software But it doesn't seem to be something malicious. We'll find out According to kill switch we do have plenty of processes running Hopefully the restart is going to fix all of this So I'll let Kaspersky disinfect and restart the computer and I will be right back once that is done getting a lot of pop-ups so the malware applications are still running in the background so this is more of a reactive response from Kaspersky not really a proactive response hopefully it'll still do the trick and our computer won't be totally screwed with pop-ups when we come back online after the restart now it says malware actions are being rolled back registry key values are being restored Kaspersky is really good at this they are really good at the reactive response they have really good removal procedures so hopefully it'll be able to take care of the situation but needless to say I prefer the prevention approach and I wouldn't want my computer to have so much malware running on it in the first place so again some suspicious software was detected and the startup of the application was blocked so it seems like there's a huge war going on right now between the malware and Kaspersky let's wait and see who comes out on top our system is being restarted let's wait and see if anything loads up now we have the troubleshooting wizard since we had active malware on the system so we're going to search for damage seems like some settings were modified so we're just going to restore them and now we should be done the system does seem pretty much clean. Let's just load up kill switch again. Ooh, we do have these three processes still active on the system, so that can be too nice. So even though we are not seeing any pop-ups, we still have active malware on the system. So now we're going to delete the malware folder, do our second opinion scans, and uh, we'll see what they find. I can't delete everything because some of these are active, but I'll try to delete whatever I can and proceed. Alright, the scanners are done and the results are quite interesting. So first of all, Malwarebytes did not detect anything at all, giving Kaspersky the clean sheet. If we move to Zamana, we see that it flags this malware 762.exe, so we have one active threat. However, if we move to Hitman Pro, as you can see, we have all the four processes detected. So all of these are active, and they're detected as Trojan by Hitman Pro. So since Hitman Pro just uses Kaspersky and Bitdefender engines now, I'm guessing this was the Bitdefender engine. So it's up to you how you want to interpret these results. If we look at Kaspersky's application control, we can see that all of these processes are running as low restricted. So it is possible that the malicious actions that they're trying to perform are not happening. However, there's no way to guarantee that. Ideally, though, I wouldn't want these processes running in memory in the first place. So let me know in the comments what you think of this result. By the way, if you noticed that Kaspersky was disabled before, I just did that to speed up the second opinion scans. Please don't make a big deal about that. So what are my final thoughts? 
honestly, I'm not very impressed. Considering Kaspersky is a veteran in the industry and this is a premium product, I would expect more. Having said that, you can tweak a lot of settings to improve the default level of protection in Kaspersky. So maybe they should rethink their factory settings. Of course, it's going to add more false positives, but I feel that the extra protection might be worth it. So since a lot of you probably like Kaspersky a lot and want to use it because of the advanced features that it offers, maybe I will make another video later on talking about the settings that you can modify in order to get better protection. But for now, this is going to be it. I tested it in default settings because that's how I test every other product. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was quite interesting for me. Honestly, I was not expecting these results. So please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'd be really interested to see what you guys think. And like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the PC Security channel for more great videos. Consider supporting me on Patreon. And as always, stay informed. Stay secure.